Hi, I'm Paul Salmon, I'm a spiritualist medium. My guest today is Chrissy Astle. Now, Chrissy is a celebrant and author, and you're known uh, about your work with angels. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was, that's I fair. I hesitated, that's on fair. <laughs> I hesitated on angel expert, because that's a tag, isn't it? It is, but that's the one I'm best known for because I write for Spiritual Destiny magazine every month and my, my pages are the angel pages. Mm -hmm. And of course my website is Angel Light. Yeah. So it's about bringing that light of the angelic realms into people's lives. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, I've been, for nearly 20 years now, I've been teaching people how to connect with the angelic energies mm -hmm. um, around everybody, around us all. Yeah. And so it would stand to reason that people put that tag on, although being a facilitator is more than that. How can we connect to the angelic energies in that case? Well, first of all, we need to get in touch with who we are and we need to find our own way towards our spirituality, which is mostly the work that I do. So my work as a spiritual facilitator, which is that phrase that you were asking me about earlier when yeah. you said, what's a facilitator? Um, a facilitator is somebody who enables rather than teaches. Mm -hmm. So I would empower and enable somebody to connect for themselves to those energies. People refer to as guardian angels in the main. Yeah. Um, but I work with seven archangels, so mm -hmm. it's the seven archangels I put people in touch with. And each archangel has a different energy. Yes, yes, just as we do. Just as we do. I mean, it, we might all be singing from the same hymn sheet, yeah. but we've each got our own presence, and it's that presence and essence which I can, um, which I like to try and enable people to connect with. Right. So how did this begin with you, Chrissy? How did you recognise these different energies? Oh, through years of practice, really. I, I, um, I think I always did. When I was a little girl, I used to mm -hmm. feel feel things around me and I, I was an only child so people tended to put that down as being a vivid imagination. Yeah. Uh, as it happened I wasn't brought up by my parents and my mother, my mother has written books about angels and draws angels and has drawn angels and channeled messages from Ascended Masters in her own life in America and my father who also didn't bring me up, um, I later learned when I was in my 30s that he took guidance from the angelic realms and the Holy Spirit all the time. So I suppose it's in the genes, really. Yeah, <laughs> but it's a hell of a distance between you both. And... Yeah, it's quite interesting, isn't it? They obviously came together, had me, and then went their separate ways, and I yeah. toddled off and got on with my own journey and then came to it in the end. Yeah. I was in my 30s before I decided that enough was enough of the material mundane life, and yeah. I reconnected uh, through a huge traumatic life change. Was there? Mm. Can you tell us what the traumatic life change I, is? Or? Yeah, I, I became clinically depressed, Did you? suicidal. Did you? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I sort of got into a place where marriage was too much, mm. the work I was doing was totally alien to my soul journey, mm. and I, I just sort of called for help from a moment of deep despair and said either take me now because I've had enough, or help me. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and with that, I was invited to an Essene gathering. And you might ask me what Essenes are in a minute, but I was a, a invited to something. I didn't know what it was. I'd never heard of it. My mother was coming over from America to speak at this gathering. Mm -hmm. And so I went along and I found a very practical way of connecting to the angelic realms um, through prayer and through meditation. Uh, that was that was to do with the way Jesus taught originally. Well, I was going to say, was Jesus uh, an Essene? Yes, Jesus. Jesus was an Essene. Yeah. Yeah. It's it was a it was a, a not a tribe, but a, a, a very important aspect of Judaism at that time. In fact, it's older. It's way way older. It's said to come from Atlantis. But I went to that group, not really understanding why I was there, who these funny people were, why they were sitting in a circle with a great big amethyst in the middle, mm -hmm. why they were meditating. And somebody stood up and said, oh, I've channeled some angel cards and I've put them all around the circle and I'd like you all to try them. And my reaction at that time was, oh, of course you have. You know, I was so cynical and, yeah. and sceptical. <clears throat> and I picked up a little card and I was actually asking the universe, I shouldn't be here, I shouldn't be here, should I? And I picked up this card and it said, why not? Oh, did it? <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I, I left that week, that retreat, yeah. uh, knowing that my life was about to change, and it did. 
And you've brought yeah. out your own angel card. I have! Isn't that ironic? <laughs> and, and because I bought them on my own pack, which I've had before, yeah. in a lovely presentation box. Yeah. But I believe that's a collector's item now. It is. You can only buy those second hand now. It's quite a few years since these came out. Yeah. This was the first beautiful. These were channeled. I was given um, 52 words. Mm. Uh, they wanted to, to the, the publisher wanted them, whoops, sorry, the publisher wanted them to be comparable with some of the best selling cards. Mm. And uh, so they gave me the words and I literally lit a candle, allocated space, meditated with each word until a picture came in my head. I'm very visual, mm. so I need to see a picture and with that picture came a message. And so I had to quickly type it out and then send it to the publisher and the publisher sent it over to an artist. Took three artists before they found this guy, Rene Miller. Right. Yeah. But each angel was depicted in a different way. And yes. Holding different, well, I don't know, pictures with a tree or holding yes. different things. And, and you had to tell the artist what to paint yeah. or what to draw with that yep. angel. Yeah. Each of these, then, then we all know that, that this is not what an angel looks like. No. Uh, it, this is because as human beings, we, we, we have to create something that looks like us. That's how we accept it in the first place. Right. And then as we learn and we, we connect more, we connect with the vibration, with the essence. Um, but these, th there's a message. So it's, it's an angel picture full of symbolism. And then there's a word at the bottom. So this one I took was release. So you could say that's the angel of release. Yeah. <coughs> but I suppose you could look at those in a way we do tarot cards or yeah other type oracle cards and give readings absolutely but the difference between the these angel cards yeah. and a tarot deck is with the tarot deck it contains hidden mysteries okay. of jewish mysticism where they hid the messages in the pictures of the cards yeah. so you have to learn what those messages are you have to learn the tarot deck okay. to be able to read it adequately and then as a good reader you would interpret it in your own way depending on the energy of the person with you, wouldn't yes. you? Oh, whereas with these cards um, people can do it for themselves in a way they were specifically intended for personal spiritual development okay. So you're connecting to the symbolism, you're seeing a picture, you might see it differently every time you see the card. And if you're the reader, you've got the person in front of you who's chosen some of these beautiful images, mm -hmm. and then you will intuitively be guided to one particular aspect of mm -hmm. that picture, and that's what you as a clairvoyant will pick right. up on. I don't do that so much. No. Um, I use them as a tool for connecting with people, but for me, I know what the message was that came with each card, and I encourage people to seek a message for themselves. For themselves yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Chrissy, you can feel angelic energies. Yes. Have you actually seen them? Yes. What yes. are they like? Tell me. Yes. In fact, even though the first vision I had, which, which was through a huge window, uh, in my flat. When I, when I changed my life entirely, mm. I went to university, I decided to get a degree to find out what angels meant to each of the different religions in the world. Okay. Because I felt, here I was in East London running workshops, people were coming from different cultures and different religious backgrounds, and I really didn't want to offend anybody, just by ignorance really. So I needed to go and find out about Islam, Hindu, Sikhism, Baha'i, the whole, I wanted to know about all of them so that I could face a workshop filled with people because I knew that that was what was going to happen eventually. And I'd have an, an, a, a bit of knowledge and I could see how this angelic light, this cord of, of gold, if you like, stretched through every religion and every world culture. So I went off and applied to do a degree um, at one of the big London universities. Mm -hmm. And um, it was while I was doing that, right at the beginning, I was researching and I was reading and I was getting really involved with this. And I thought, hang on a minute, this is ridiculous. I've dedicated the rest of my life to working with the Holy Spirit or with angels, God, however you want to call that. But I can't if I never see you. Why do you never show yourselves to me? Mm. So I got really emotional and passionate living in my little flat on my own in East London. Yeah. And I looked out of this huge window and suddenly 
I thought, gosh, that cloud looks like an angel. But the cloud moved further and further towards me mm. and then stretched out two arms like this. Oh. But there was no face, just the brightest light. Yeah. And then behind this, I'm going to call it an apparition mm -hmm. because it was for me and it was a vision for me. It was a, a pair of, of big wings folded and then another pair of wings going right up into the heavens like this, like brush strokes. And I actually thought to myself, I'm, I'm not making this up because I would have never imagined have two sets of wings. I wouldn't have thought about it like that. And then as I approached the window with tears streaming down, I saw the gown move, I saw the feet, I saw the hands, but still no face. So I was in awe of the situation, listening intently, because I'd always thought when angels come, you can hear them speaking yeah. to you. Um, and then the angel drifted on its side and moved off and left in the sky this amazing sweetheart shape, pure heart shape that was the most vivid pink, you know, really bright, bright, bright cerise. Mm. Um, and I just wept, really, yeah. feeling this incredible sense of love. Mm. But I knew that in some way that was a message for me. Mm. It wasn't just a presence. It wasn't just because I'd said, I need to see you. Mm. There was a message in that. But I was feeling, I was feeling I didn't know what it was yeah. at the time. So I had to get some, some mentoring with that one. Okay. Have you actually met, before you finish, I must ask you this, have you met anyone on the earth as a person who really has got that divine quality within them, that spirituality? Or what's the nearest you? Ooh, the nearest you well, Paul, yeah, that, that's a huge question because everyone has the divinity and the beautiful spark of spiritual energy with them, yeah. everyone. And we're all messengers, and the word angel means messenger. Mm -hmm. So for me, my 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 whole my whole reason for teaching, and I you know I run courses and I do workshops all over the country, as you know, yeah. all the time, and retreats and everything, is to enable people to accept the love that's in them, and then spread that love, which is what the heart meant. Uh, um, and and yes, mm -hmm. people have special qualities. Are we all angels? Well, that depends on what you believe angels to be. Mm. I just recently came back from the Holy Land. I took a trip out there um, with 22 people and um, standing by the Western Wall, which is the last part of, of the temple in Israel, in Jerusalem, I felt again that presence, which I didn't see it, but mm. I felt it. Huge, huge light around me, behind me, and I knew I was in the presence. Of, of an angelic being, mm -hmm. whether they, the, the whole word angel has, for me it's, it's, it's been dumbed down yeah. a little because there's so much stuff out yeah. there about angels. Yes. Yeah. Working with angels for me is finding the beauty and the love deep, deep within yourself and then bringing that out and not being afraid to be the true you. And, and that's how you facilitate, you know, that's how you do yeah, your work, I do. that's what you do for I other do. people. I do. Chris, it's been lovely meeting you again. And you, Paul. Thanks a lot. And uh, see you again sometime. Thank you. Bye.